There are many astonishing ancient ruins which can be found throughout India. Ancient temples or caverns, often carved into giant boulders or directly out of the bedrock of Earth itself. Many of these ruins drenched in exquisite artwork, carvings created with such vision and accuracy that they boggle the minds of all who attempt to explain the methodology of their creator. We have covered a number of sites within India in the past, many of them so precise in their finish that they could have seemingly only been created using precision stone-cutting technology. And our next site of interest is of no exception. Located in the northern part of the state of Karnataka in South India, the village of Hampi has some extremely captivating ruins. Dotted with large boulders, the site is also home to some extremely puzzling relics, one of which is the ancient chariot, clearly a depiction of a once astonishing creation. The cart itself was not only clearly massive, but was pulled with elephants rather than horses. Clearly indicative of a highly capable group, this incredible chariot is one amongst an array of marvelously preserved architectural artifacts, most of which display a level of refinement created with such precision that modern man could only replicate such feats using machines, something modern academia claims has only ever been utilized by our own modern civilization. Thus, an explanation as to how the site, or indeed its smorgasbord of ancient precision-made stoneworks were made, eludes us to this day. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is due to mainstream historians' reluctance to consider what these ruins clearly indicate, that they were once the work of a civilization that was not only highly advanced, but utilized stone-cutting technologies, methods of transportation, lifting and placement that rival even that of today's architectural capabilities. How can one peer upon such sites as that of Hampi, or indeed others, Pumapanku, Giza, Petra, etc., sites created with such accuracy that to suggest they were created with soft metal tools or with the use of primitive measuring equipment is simply absurd. Furthermore, none of these ruins would be possible simply with the use of the human eye. The only logical explanation is that just like that of modern-day stonework, the stones were indeed machined cut to such a high quality using precision tools, only then were they placed where they lay today. Hampi was predictably re-inhabited by ancestors based within permitted timelines, once being the capital of a previous Indian empire. What's intriguing about the site, however, is the mysterious, seemingly untouched boulders which dot its grounds. The question is, although they now appear to be geological, were they in fact once relics themselves, left by an even earlier civilization? If not, then why were these stones left where they are found today? Why were they built around rather than utilized, carved, or shifted? They were clearly once of significance, and due to the fact ancient sanctuaries and fortresses are often re-inhabited, the possibility that they were indeed once carvings would logically make sense. The questions would be, just how old is this civilization? Who built the ancient site of Hampi? How did they build it? Were ancient high technologies utilized in its creation? If not, then how was it constructed? It is a place which we find highly compelling. There are many intriguing ancient ruins still to be explored, still in existence dotting our planet, many of which are yet to be fully explained. Enigmatic stone carvings and often tool marks left upon quarried or cracked or broken stones each indicative of lost technology and thus a lost civilization. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies, the Plain of Jars located in Laos being but one of these extraordinary sites. Enormous stone jars that would simply be illogical to create in the modern era, yet would have been even more illogical for our well-studied yet far less capable ancient ancestors to have created them. Why these mysterious sculptures were created, and possibly most important of all, when they were made, is an enigma still left within our past. And the Kachari ruins are of no exception. A set of stone ruins located in Dimapur, Nagaland, northeast India. According to academia, their history dates back to the 10th century, 
when they apparently appeared during what is now known as the Kachari Civilization. According to this hypothesis, they were created by the Kachuri Kingdom, which ruled the area before the Anam invasion during the 13th century AD. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars, which, just like that of the ancient jars of Laos, their original purpose remains a complete mystery, and although of considerable size and weight, are still considered to have once been a part of a game similar to that of chess, yet any explanation of how these enormous statues were moved remains conveniently unexplained. As expected, due to their inexplicable nature, the site has been largely overlooked by funded academia. It seems that the fact that these remnants are clearly indicative of a civilization of tremendous capabilities, including the refined finish of the sculptures, has meant that academics simply avoid discussing or exploring the site in its entirety. Not only is the site neglected by academic study, but the vast majority of these ancient artifacts have unfortunately crumbled during their long life which has led many alternative researchers to volley against the Indian government, demanding that more be done to protect the site and to subsequently avoid the ancient site from suffering even more erosion or of unfortunate vandalism. Who created the Kachari ruins? When were they created? What was its original purpose? It seems, regardless of these questions being of great historical importance, what is apparently more precious to funded individuals and the institutions in which their conformity to existing, yet highly disputed chronologies of man subsequently prop up their selected fields of apparent study, and are more than willing to aid in the continuation of fallacies, if that means the continued survival of their field of choice. It would appear that these ancient stoneworks, each of an enormous size, are all ancient uparts, whose sheer existence is enough of a deterrent for academia to even mention the existence of, let alone publish any explanatory studies of the ruins, absent any published journals. Away from academic ignorance, however, the local population inevitably has their own supposed surviving story regarding the creation and origins of the stones, which now forms a nice amalgam of Indian mythology. As per this mythology, Bahim and Hadimba got married at the site in antiquity, later giving birth to Gadoka at the site. And according to this local folklore, it's said that Bahim and his child used to play chess here with these pieces. And although clearly of mythology, it is better to attribute the ruins and to attempt an explanation in regards to a creator of tremendous capabilities, we feel. Better this than what we currently experience complete ignorance of this precious yet highly delicate, still surviving ancient ruins. It is a place which we find highly compelling.